Hey, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, wherever you are, or whenever you're watching this. This is Sergio with the Ride Share Guy. Now, today I'm joined by a good friend of mine from LA who went to Arizona to grab all those bags of cash. Now, I kind of told him to do so. So I'm really curious about how it turned out. Hopefully, I didn't get a black eye. But so with all that said, um, let me introduce you to Steven, who was an L.A. driver who went out to uh, Phoenix for the Waste Management Open. And obviously, as we know, the Super Bowl. So, Steven, good morning. How's it going? Excellent. Um, had a great time out here and still planning on doing a little bit more driving before I come back. There's some more airport trips and whatnot, but had a great experience. Great. So tell us a little bit about uh, what kind of car you drive and, um, you know, how your trip was to Arizona. And and obviously, I don't know if you <laughs> slept in your car with your Tesla mattress or not, but, you yeah. know, give us a little bit of background about that. Okay, so um, I drive a Tesla Model Y, a 2022, and I did end up sleeping in my uh, on the Tesla mattress um, on the first night. So I got here and wasn't sure if the apps uh, the applications were going to work. I was told by several several drivers that it would, um, but they can come out of different areas. I had a little bit more difficulty. Fortunately, I had already gotten an inspection form for Arizona, which is if you're coming from California to Arizona, they have different requirements. For Uber, it was no problem. I called them, they made the switch. I don't think I really had to do anything else with them. Uh, the application started working almost immediately. With Lyft, it took several hours. Um, so I spent most of, uh, I started on Friday, I spent most of the morning on Saturday getting it activated. Um, so, um, so you obviously, multi-app right uber and lyft in yeah. la when you're in la yes um but you did the same strategy or with the idea of the same strategy when you went out to phoenix right correct so, um yeah i i don't know why these companies do what they do that you know you should be able to drive whenever wherever unless there is right. other it used to be a lot easier i think you know the, the but I, I mean i do understand the 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 company's point of view for security reasons and things like that but uh, that's not the issue now. The issue is, so you got there a couple of days earlier. As we know, we had two major events going on. You know, Waste Management Phoenix Open, which is a golf tournament. Yes. Which attracts close to 150,000 people every day, pretty much. Really, it's a, it's a party. It's just a huge party. And and so you got there. Tell us a little bit about your first day and, and then what you did and what apps you used and and. You don't have to give us numbers, exact numbers, but then if you can give us a ballpark of how your uh, first day went or and uh, subsequently after that. Okay, so my first day was pretty rough. I think I made about $300. Um, my first few days here, since I came here on Friday, the, the week before. So I came on Friday, I wanted to make sure that the applications were gonna work. By Saturday, I was thinking that possibly I was going to have to turn around and just come back because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get the application working. Well, this is the part that I didn't say. So with Uber, they needed to do a background check again, and they said it was going to take three to five business days. But I guess they used the previous background check. So I wasn't paying attention. And when I pulled up my notifications, it said hours ago, I had already been approved. So I went online with them with no problem. Um... I did, I slept in my car the first night and then, uh, yeah, I made I, I, on, I believe this was, oh, Saturday, Saturday was really good at night. It, it reminds me of Los Angeles area and working in Santa Monica and such. Um, I, and I really just needed to get to know the market, right. Get to know the spaces. Scottsdale is like one of the big places that it, it, it's, it's good to get business and then old town, which is in the Scottsdale area. So. I, I got to kind of just feel my way around as well as uh, pick up people from the airport, which gave me a lot of opportunity to uh, meet new clients that I, I'd be able to work with again. I mean, so so that that's that's see, you did an amazingly smart thing, which is you went out there actually a week before both of the events, right? Right. Because a lot of people, you know, go out there, they don't know the city, you know. Right. You show me the money. We only talk about know your city, right? Know the right. patterns. 
Yeah, you gave yourself plenty of chance to figure that out, which I'm sure you did as smart as you are. So kudos to you on that. And then the other thing that you did is that is, you know, you went out there, you know, I I was talking to you before you went out there, you know, you shouldn't have too many expectations, but it should be good enough, right? And then you going out a week earlier, I think they made probably all of the difference that compared to another driver that just decided on a whim probably the day of the first day of the waste management open go out there and then try to figure all this out which is almost impossible so so you went out in a week earlier you know you're now you're figuring out where to be when to be which is very important when it comes to right share and now now you're acclimated now it's monday tuesday wednesday of the week and tournament the golf management you know golf uh, waste management tournament op- right. starts on thursday Right. So how did those, how did those days, how did that first big day with all these people in town go? So that day I think was the start of really making some money. I believe on that day, was it Thursday? Thursday, I think I made about 600, 600 to 700. Um, I, I actually made an officer mad because I picked somebody, I, I had picked somebody up. I was taking them over. They went to go pick up a ticket, which extended that ride. And a, I think it was going to be like a $70 trip turned out to be a hundred and a hundred and sixty something dollars on my first ride over to the waste management. It was amazing. Um, so they, it took them like a little bit over five minutes on the, on the way, which it just made the ride amazing. And then, uh, so I came in, I dropped. When you come into the waste management, there's a lane with just one car, one car in, one car out. I I let the passenger out right at the front, and the officer told me to come around the loop and let him out on the opposite side. So he was like, "If if you do it again, I'm gonna you're gonna be trespassed for the rest of the event." <laughs> so wow. yeah, yeah. So I kind of um after doing uh, I think like two of those trips, the traffic I I. I got to the point where i felt like the traffic wasn't worth it and most of the the, uh it's the after party really where i was able to start really accumulating some money and and that's what i took advantage of mostly not as much the trips to and from because the traffic was so insane um but yeah that's what i how i ended up working it right so so tell us the difference about between the two apps right i mean you, you you now you're you got approved on uber they did your background check you're ready to go uh, tell us a little bit about the flavor of the surge and what you saw and 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 what apps you use the most actually now mm-hmm. we're we're um just gonna stick to the apps for the sake of because most people would stick to the apps but yeah uh, we, you know we had conversations about um y- y- look they're all you have a great car for a ride yeah. bag, right you're very yeah. personable and you 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 know you should have done well as you did but you know, there's three phases of, of this in, a, in huge events like this, right? So uh, obviously I know your background, but you know, you're building towards a um, private clientele kind of a list, even when you're in LA, which, which is very smart to do. You're using these apps for your plan B, which you do have those plan Bs. And then it, did you, you know, try to use the same tactics in, in Arizona, like did, in those even short period of time, did you work on building a little bit of a you know, um, private client base? I was very fortunate that <clears throat> over here, I had several people that were from California, in fact, and even and individuals that uh, said that they fly into California every once in a while. And so as, I, <clears throat> as I'm talking to different people, I, I'm getting out of my car, interacting and whatnot. I was able to make a lot of good connections. In fact, some that used me uh, as as recently as this morning. I had two clients use me this morning that are from California that said that they will be calling me over in California and be using me a lot, talking about red car- carpet events and whatnot as well. That's amazing. So, See, you know, yeah. That's amazing. See, that's, yeah. that's where you're actually, you're building to the future, right? Yes. Y- you don't even know, but, but those most likely will be lifelong clients for you, right? Hundred percent. Well, yes. let's let's talk a little bit about the Uber and Lyft app. Did they function properly? I mean, you know, look, it's it's mm-hmm. it's a madhouse. I mean, oh yeah, it, it's crazy. I can I can explain that in pretty detail because there was there were some issues besides just getting it connected in the first place. There were some issues. So when it comes to Lyft, 
I was having uh, massive issues where it would just black out. And I would test this by going down to the lower tiers because normally you would expect rides to come in on just lift. Yeah. So um, when I would turn on lift and I would get a few rides for, for Lux Black, I just, I said it's only Lux Black once the event started. The week before that, uh, where I'm testing the market and everything, I, I was trying to focus on Lux Black but there wasn't enough airport rides really to, to keep it kind of sustainable. So the best of my ability, I was doing Lux Black, but I was kind of feeding off of Uber, you know, during the, the first few days because the, um, the surge was better there. And then also just the price, uh, the, the uh, rates on the fares were just better in general. I hardly turned on Lyft in that situation, but it allowed me to save my Lyft for the afternoons. Yeah. When, there will be more likely for people to be dropped by uh, uh, wanting to get the higher end rides in the afternoon. What kind, of, what kind of surges did you see on both platforms? If you can tell okay. us about that. So are we talking about on the uh, on the event days? Yeah, e e any day. I mean, you know, okay, I, okay. I know I know they cap it, but I want to hear it from the horse's mouth because yeah, you know, yeah, so, I, I, uh, which I shouldn't do, by the way, which I disagree with. Right? I mean, I agree, I agree, I, I agree with you. They shouldn't cap it. It's absolutely ridiculous and with how bad traffic was and the likelihood that you weren't going to get an, uh, an increase in pay for the amount of time that you're spending. Uh, you've talked about this before. It's absolutely, I'm not giving my time as a charity, yep. you know, um, if it, if the trip is going to take longer than, than intended, I should get paid for that. Yep. Uh, there should be no ifs, if, ands or buts about it. But so as far as I was primarily looking at Lyft, I do normally multi app, but in this situation, I had Lux Black rides that I was getting consistently, so I didn't really need to use Uber as much, yeah. even still. Um, and so I was looking at Lyft, and I was getting $25 surges, but that was the cap. No matter where it was, even at the even at the game, where it was gridlock traffic, like, you weren't moving. Unfortunately, it was, in my opinion, it wasn't managed well. The space where... Uh, rideshare was supposed to pick up wasn't easily identified to the people that needed to get get rides there was plenty of opportunities for private rides um but even surprisingly with the price of the of the tickets you know they weren't willing to go that high you know so because yeah I, I can imagine i can imagine how expensive those seats were Although right. I, like, it was one of the best super bowls it was a great game so it was really impressive yeah, yeah. yeah i mean yeah. It was amazing. But um, so, you know, cabbing is one thing, right? Because you know it and I know it. And, you know, this is not about being negative. It's about facts, right? So when they cap you at 25 on the back end, they're charging the passenger 500% prime time, right? Because, see, that's the thing that I just don't get. You know, why don't you share the wealth a little bit here, right? right? Don't be so greedy, right? Because I'm out here doing this is your service, actually. I'm representing you as a Lyft or an Uber driver. You know, don't don't maximize my earnings potential, right? And and besides that, it's like you incentivize me not to go to the event. Then exactly, you're you're basically telling me I should skirt the event and go somewhere else where I can get a ride that's far easier for me to drive around. Because unfortunately, um, with this the traffic that was around the stadium, they blocked off certain roads. As we know at LA, they do the same thing, uh, especially when you're going to Dodger Stadium. Yeah, but. Part of the problem was they didn't have officers like sending like 20 cards and then stopping, sending 20 cards. So you you had it where people were making their own decisions, which was locking up traffic more. Yeah. So it is that which is it on the app. It's just, you know, poor management of the space. They weren't maybe they weren't ready or, or they didn't plan it very well. But um so yeah, in the, in that case, I would expect to get paid. Don't cap, don't cap how much I can make because all that's gonna tell me to do is look for an area or come in on the edge, get the surge, and then go somewhere else where I know I can get a ride. Because again, everybody was gathering at Scottsdale. That's yeah. where the party were. Yeah. You know? Well, you speaking like a true veteran though, that's where the money is at. You know, I did an interview with the Phoenix TV station and I said, my advice to the drivers was don't get stuck. Don't get stuck yeah. going to the stadium. Don't pick up at stadium. Even if, yeah. because I heard on, from a couple of different drivers that they had like a $30 per pickup at the, at the stadium you know, stadium pickup zone. I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, but that's one time that you're going to do yeah. that. And then what? Yeah. And then what? You're stuck for two hours. Yes. Well, that's 100%. 30 bucks. You got your 30 bucks, but it's not worth it, right? You could do a whole bunch of 
you know, less surge probably, but yes. many, many more trips. So, so let's go back to the Thursday. So Thursday, first day of waste management, you made your money. Uh, mm -hmm. How was Friday? How was Saturday leading up to the event? Friday was amazing. Thing. Um, I was able to do an easy over a grand day on, uh, and on top of that, I was able to get some, uh, some private rides again. <laughs> you know, it's just the contact, mm -hmm. uh, the flow of traffic. People were constantly asking if, if my car was available, which, uh, it prompted me. I got to see some new strategies actually. Yeah. If, if I'm allowed to do it, I gotta make sure that it's up to code, but there's so many uh, of the drivers that had for hire signs yeah. of, in their car, lights going up, you know, uh, and police and everything were around. They didn't stop them at all, you know. So it, uh, and then they also had a rideshare uh, pickup area, but hardly anybody was over there. Yeah. They just people standing on the street looking at their phone, and you could kind of tell, hey, they're looking for a ride. Yeah, they probably listened to the the, 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 the Arizona drivers probably listened to that uh, interview that I did with Emily Pritchard and and. You know, I mean, to me, I'm an experienced veteran. I've done many, many, many hundreds of events, you know, and LA traffic, as you know, is probably as bad as Arizona. So, or worse. So you have Arizona to learn. Yeah, yeah, you just kind of, yeah, you just kind of learn by, by, by doing these events. And then initially I used to go into the stadium so I'm, and then I'm stuck for three hours. Right. And then you think to other veterans and they go, why are you even going there? Right. So, yeah. But, and, and actually I got a chance. Fortunately, in our group, in our Discord, we have a, a, a two or three people that ended up going, uh, either live here or or came uh, in order to, to run the events and uh, explain different spots that you could sit at, like the Walmart close to the to the stadium in order to pick up rides and such. I mean, a lot of people, as soon as the event was over, needed to rush over to the airport. Yeah. So I was able to get like two or three rides coming, coming out of the stadium. The problem was, traffic trying to come into the stadium was such a pain yeah you know yeah uh but other than that and then i mean coming out was a far easier than coming than, than uh coming right so so um you finished the events so super bowl is over waste management the uh, phoenix open is over what are your plans why are you what are you going to come back now back to la you know so, quite so, a bit of a trip so. like yeah we got a lot of uh airport airport trips coming you know and uh, earlier this morning we hit the surge cap again on Lyft, 25. Um, I was seeing 19s and 20s uh, as far as Uber was concerned, but it just wasn't worth it to me because I got so many Lux Black rides. Right. The the Uber rides just weren't, the price, the value wasn't coming up. Like I was seeing 90, 80, $100 rides on Lyft. There was no reason to really turn on. Uh, yeah, but you know, I said this, I said this last week and you know, and, and a lot of people appreciated that. It's like, my time is for sale to the highest bidder. Yes. And, and I, I, yeah, and it, you know, one of the big things that I, I see as a disadvantage here with Uber, and maybe this is their business model, I don't know, but like, for example, Select, I should qualify for Select. Oh, absolutely. That, you know, it's ridiculous that I don't qualify for Select. So why am I going to use your platform when you don't give me an opportunity to give a higher end ride, you know, give higher end service to get higher pay, which I deserve. Absolutely. Well, well, so you know what? Let's clarify that. So you're there. You you both apps available to you, right? So what categories were you on Uber, and what categories were you on Lyft? So for the most part, um, and, and, and people may not know this, comfort tends to not be worth the money. No, <laughs> comfort tends to not be worth the money. You shouldn't be waiting on comforts. I spent a day where I waited at the airport at LAX to see what kind of comfort ride I could get out of the airport. It no, is or not. not. And I only needed to do it one time to learn that lesson. Yeah. Uber X rides can come in. It has a variable rate. And sometimes they come in well above what you'd expect. Sometimes better than the black ride, a, a Lutz black. So as far as what platforms I use, it's either Uber X for the most part. I did get some comforts. Um, and then uh, on Lyft, I mostly did Lux black, but I did get a few uh, uh, Lux rides, but mm -hmm. mostly black. So on, on, on Lyft, you were all the way from regular standard Lyft, you were allowed to do all the way up to Lux Black. Yes. And on Uber, Uber X, which is the equal to Lyft standard, that only that let you get the comfort, really? Not that's yeah. it. And, the and Tesla so, Model Y. Yes, the Tesla Model Y. It's absolutely ridiculous. And then on um and then on top of it, the application for whatever reason on comfort, uh, it didn't 
separate comfort for me. And uh, apparently some other drivers are having the same thing, uh, same issue. I yeah, talked yeah. to some of the drivers in the lot, yeah. but when you go through the list, comfort wasn't there. Yeah, they bundled it now. They bundled it. Yeah, they bundle it now. It's just, it's like, it's like, it's like up to them. Oh, let's send them a comfort or let's send them a right. yeah. like, No, I have a preference, right? I want to do certain things. Which well, uh, I want to bring up an interesting thing for if people don't realize, if you don't have Uber Exxon, yeah. when you're in LAX, you will not get comfort rides. It yeah. won't even put you in the queue. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. But that, but you know, so, so it seems like you had a great experience, right? It was oh, worth, yeah. it was worth your drive I mean, because it's not a short drive. It's about six yeah. hours. Yeah. It took me about, it's because I had to charge. So right. char I had to charge twice. So it took about an hour on the charge. Uh, the drive itself was like six, six and a half hours. Yeah. And then, but. It, again, it seems like the the financial benefits outweighed outweighed the drive, right? I, yeah, I think I I made cleared over four four uh, maybe five grand. I yeah. I said it on one of the chats. I said, you know, it's gonna come back with three k. You even beat yeah. that. So I I, I cleared thumbs that. up yeah. to that. Yeah. So um, on in the remaining couple of minutes, you know, I know you have your own YouTube channel. I know you're very positive. You know, look, we talk about the shortcomings of all these apps. It's not complaints. Mm -hmm. There are things that we can change and there are yeah. things we cannot touch. Okay. You know, reminiscing about the past is one thing, but then right. many of the people are doing this, right? right? And, you know, rightly or wrongly, they're doing it. Now, if we can teach everybody how to do it the right way, like you do, then I yeah. think complaints will end automatically, right? Yeah. So I agree. I mean, I mean, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, your channel and, 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 you know, put a plug in for that. As well as as well as what your plan B's are, you know, when you get back to LA and for the future of of rideshare for you. Okay, so if uh, most you might not know that I also work at a school, so I, I work. Uh, I'm a computer technician, and then I do rideshare in the afternoons. Uh, so my plans moving forward with this, I mean, I'm trying to build out as many private clients as I possibly can. The goal is to pay out this car. Uh, it cost me sixty two grand plus. Uh, you know, California taxes and, and uh, registration pushed it up to 70 grand. The goal is to pay it off in a year. And I'm going to do whatever it takes. The next event I'm going to hit is Coachella. I'm going to use the knowledge that I gained from this experience. This has opened up a whole new world for me. Um, and people are noticing and wanting to have conversations about building yourself as an individual. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, so I, it's a, it's amazing. And, and my YouTube channel, uh, it's called the unbroken driver. I get to talk about my experience driving around in this Tesla. I, how I got it. Uh, you know, I went, uh, and I was borrowing my brother's Tesla. He said, why don't you just get your own? He, he front loaded the credit for me so that I could get it. And, and I've been able to work with it ever since. Um, this is a workhorse. I'm not afraid to put a bunch of miles on it. That was the plan. Um, I, I can use it for everything else, but the goal is to take this vehicle and put it under my business and register it under my LLC so that I can get commercial insurance because in California, the requirement to get on Uber black, you have to have the vehicle registered. So I want to get on Uber black, but I also want to be able to get, uh, contracts, whether they're from governments or from, uh, from businesses where they need my services. So with those types of contracts, you're talking about uh, deals that could be tens of thousands of dollars, you know, and all of a sudden you go from making a hundred thousand dollars a year to three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, I mean, but see, this is this is what the gig apps are good for, right? You know, I I mean, I talk to hundreds and hundreds of drivers a week, and I get the feel, and a lot of them do not have what you have, which is having a plan B, using these gig apps towards your plan B, and it's yes. clearly you clearly identified what they are, right? Yeah. You have a plan, you have the car, and you're working towards it. And I'm glad, I'm glad you, I mean, I'm not going to say you took my advice, but I, I, I gotta, we have no, a little bit fired. of session going on. No, you, you, and when you set the, the goal at $3,000, I'm like, okay, I want to clear that. I want to be able to go beyond that. So well, we we both came out and both came out with, with, without a black guy. And, and, you know, all I can tell you is that. I'm glad you went. I'm glad you learned. And one thing that you said made so much sense like 30 seconds ago. You said, whatever you learn there, you're going to take it to Coachella, right? Yeah. I'm the veteran of Coachella. I, I went the first three, four years, and then Uber started messing up the whole thing. And I'm like, no, not worth it. 
Mm-hmm. But now, now that you learn, you know, what the game is about, I think yeah. you'll have great success there too. But I want to thank you for your time. Um, you know, I, I will definitely hook up when you get back and I want to listen to your war stories, horror stories, good stories, bad stories. We'll do it over a lot. Oh, I've got a few. <laughs> yeah. We'll do over a lunch and hopefully nobody puked in your car. <laughs> no, I'm very fortunate. I got, I think I got close with the car, <laughs> but, uh, but unfortunately, no. <laughs> Great. So check Steven out on Unbroken Driver um, on you on his YouTube channel. He's inspirational, you know, and and he's treating this as a small business. And yeah. you know, we say it on Show Me the Money all day long. Know your worth. Treat it like a small business, and he's exactly doing that. So thank you, Steven. Much appreciated, man. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having. Safe drive back, okay? And then let's definitely uh, do some lunch or dinner when you get back. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. All right. Great.